Alright, I'm going to make a quick video for Andrew G. Uh, and anybody else that wants to get value for their money when it comes to lithium batteries. So what I've got here is a Super Beast. This comes from Batteries Plus, And it's basically 12 uh, parallel 4S, or actually I should say 4S 12P. So you've got four cells in series for 12 volts, or, you know, 14.6. And then you've got... Uh, 12 cells in parallel to add up to 96 amper hours. So like I say, this is the Super Beast, just to kind of give you an idea of the size. It's a bit bigger than the 32 amper hour I was running. Uh, we've made a few changes to the system, but we'll get into that a bit later. Um, yeah, I guess my cat's going to want in this video too. So basically what you got is you've got two 12 volt banks. Um, that are, that's the way they're configured now. Um, I had it set where the upper portion is a 12 volt bank and the lower portion is a 12 volt bank. This is actually a 24 volt battery. So what I ended up having to do is actually cut a couple of bus bars. I'll do a detailed video about that when I pull this thing out. Um, but you have to cut the bus bars here uh, to, to basically keep, keep everything from going in series because they have, you know, six, it would be what, six, six S and then, uh, and then 8P, so eight of them would be, or uh, eight parallel, or eight in series, and then six in parallel. So that would have made a 48 amper hour, 24 volt bank, right? Sorry if that's confusing to follow. Uh, I'll, I'll reiterate that one more time. I've got two 12 volt banks. Originally it was 24 volts. Um, it's configured for 4S12P now, before it would have been, uh, what, 8S, uh, eight in series, and then and then six in parallel. I'm sorry, it would have been six in parallel. So 48 amperes at 24 volts has been converted to 96 amper hours at 12 volts. I've just got a couple of two watt cables um, and connectors and lugs um, that wrap around the battery basically. They go, well, it's kind of fucking hard to see here, but they run around the back side of the battery. And then, yeah, I know it's in the way of the port here. I've got my box scooted over so I can seat a third passenger temporarily. But those two big black uh, two-watt cables actually just parallel the batteries together. And then the cool thing about buying these batteries is you get these leads um, for the balance board. Um, you don't get the balance board. You do have to buy that. Um, but you do get a fan. You get an isolator. I'll show that to you real quick, too. Um, but anyway, so I repurposed the leads for the balancers into uh, the balance board that I have sitting here. So this is an active balancer. Um, and I've got, and it's kind of a little confusing to explain it, but I've basically got um, groups, gr uh, cell groups one. So you have the first cell group of each 12 volt battery goes to one termination and so on and so on down the line. You gotta get that right or shit will just absolutely get wonky on you. Um, but this battery is doing great. I've had it in here for about two weeks now, almost just shy of two weeks, um, and it's been doing great. Uh, the cells are perfectly balanced with this particular board, so you can see exactly who makes it there. I think I got it off of eBay for like, I don't know, it was like 20 bucks or something like that. Um, and it seems to do a pretty fast job at getting the cells within spec. Um, they were super close before, like within a hundredth of a volt. Um, every now and then it comes on, trickles here and there. It's pretty minimal um, on time for that. Um, but the mids and highs, give you a little update on that. So I changed out the audio control for the JL Audio Lock 22, the audio control, uh, what, the LC2i. Um, I had a lot of problems with the mids and highs getting noise induced into them when AccuBase was active. Uh, so I turned off AccuBase, and I actually lost a whole bunch of the lows uh, as well, AccuBase on or off. Uh, the higher it was set, the, the more it seemed to pronounce the mid bass, not mid bass, but you know, 30 hertz and up, or somewhere about, you know, let's say 35 hertz or so is probably center frequency where it starts adding bass. So for those of us that play low, I'm tuned at 28 hertz. Um, it definitely it wasn't getting the job done. Um, and not only that, but I lost sparkle on the mids and highs too, and I never noticed it, honestly, until I replaced it with this JL Audio Lock 22. Um, but the mids and highs have a different sound to them. They sound cleaner. Uh, just a higher high and a lower low. Everything is even. There's no wonky accu bass, uh, which I feel molests the signal in my personal opinion. Um, I know a lot of guys have been using audio control for many, many years, decades actually, because they were the only option, but 
far superior product if you have high output. Um, so the update on the mids and highs, what do we got going on here? We got two six and a half inch mid bases per door. Hey, don't you claw my seats, little base baby. So we got two six and a half inch mid base drivers per door in the doors here. Of course, the two three and a half inch mid base drivers in the pillars and two sets of Orion tweeters. It's pretty decently loud. It's enough. It's enough for me these days. Um, but anyway, that's the system updates. Um, and then as far as uh, as far as the battery, I added this little uh, Bluetooth monitor. It's for a lead acid unit, um, but it works pretty good just to know you know what your peak voltages are. Make sure you don't go above 14.6. Um, that's the highest these voltage uh, the cells will accept. A lot of guys run in 14.8. I don't recommend doing that. You're just going to shorten the life of the cells, and you're not going to gain any capacity. Barely. Maybe a, 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 literally like a couple of percent. Um, typically, 14.4 is probably the best for this pack, honestly. Uh, 14.6 if you're demoing. You know, maybe you can go to 14.8 if you're on demo time, but you got to make sure you back that sucker back down. Um, so, anyway, like I say... Uh, this thing comes fully loaded, so you get the case, you get the balance leads, you get all the copper bus bars. These are tinned, uh, so they have a, a plating on them uh, to keep the corrosion and uh, air oxidation down, I guess. Um, and it looks kind of a little sketchy here. I'm going to end up redoing all this stuff. This is all just temporary setup until uh, I start building the wall and getting the other 18 and some more other kind of power. I think I'm going to get rid of these 3500s finally. I've had these things for over a decade. Uh, they've been pretty phenomenal amps when Sundown was making a name for themselves, but uh, there's bigger and better out there these days for a hell of a lot cheaper, so I think I'll probably end up converting that. But, uh, yeah, anyway, Andergy, that's what you need right there, homies. That's, uh, what, 500 bucks out the door. That's with cables, terminations, everything. You're going to have to spend a couple hours sitting there reconfiguring the pack, but I could do a step-by-step step step and walk you through it if you like, so um, I'll send you a link to that. But, uh, anyway, that's updates for now. We'll get back to you when uh, we get something else done that's cool.